Hi there! Today's topic is all about having goals for yourself that come from a place of self-love. So we're going to talk specifically about goals for your body since this is a course about fat loss and having freedom um, and having the body that you want. And so the, this really is a good continuation from yesterday when we talked about self-acceptance and love for yourself and having that as the basis of wanting better and more for yourself. And so it's so much more powerful to have a vision and a goal for your body that's rooted in a place of acceptance and love instead of hate and always focusing on what you don't want. So the importance of this, I really love the quote um, by Deepak Chopra. He says, a negative motivation is incompatible with a positive result. So when I heard this quote for the first time, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I realized that I had done a lot of things in my life that were fueled by negative motivation. And sometimes I would achieve the goal, but I was never satisfied in the end. And I realized that it's because I wasn't setting goals from the right place, from that place within me that was loving and accepting. I was setting them for external reasons or for negative reasons. So a quick story I'll tell you. Uh, when I was 26, I, was, I had recovered from breaking my back a year before and really busting my butt to recover from almost being paralyzed and make the Olympic team. And long story short, I ended up being an alternate for the Canadian Olympic snowboard team because of the deficits I had in my legs. I wasn't able to get back to the level I was before I crashed and broke my back. And I really, um, a lot of the goals I had had throughout my snowboard career were rooted in negativity in trying to prove myself to others and trying to prove myself to my parents. Um, and so I look back and I see some, some streams of that in my snowboarding career. And then I decided I was going to, because I couldn't snowboard at the same level, I still had to prove myself. So I became a fitness competitor. And so maybe some of you have done fitness competitions, I don't know. But it's a very uh, strange world now that I look back on it. But the goal was to be on stage in a tiny suit, smaller than a bikini, and show my body off, my different muscles and my body fat and my composition to judges and have them judge my body um, and decide whether I was worthy of an award for my body. So it sounds almost comical now that I did that, you know, you'd have this big hair done and your makeup and you'd have double spray tan so you're really dark and you'd put oil all over your body. And I did this and it was sort of a bucket list thing. And I only let myself have 10 weeks to achieve the goal, which, you know, four to five months to six months is usually what people use, but I did it in 10 weeks. Uh, you know, dropped over 30 pounds, starved myself. I ate a thousand calories a day. It was completely horrendous what I did to my body. I damaged my metabolism. I damaged my psyche. I damaged my spirit. But I got up on stage after 10 weeks and I competed in the competition. I remember just thinking, oh, like this is gonna be so easy to maintain this new weight that I've got to. And all along my motivation was to be on stage and be validated by others. And so as soon as the show ended, <laughs> I actually went out for Chinese food, which I wouldn't have dreamt of eating while I was, while I was getting ready for the competition. And this, it was, it was awful, I felt awful after, but I just started down this train and I rebounded worse than you could imagine. I gained all the weight I'd lost back plus more. And it was so interesting because I, I had this motivation, but it was completely external. It wasn't very positive. I hated my thighs, so I always focused on that. I had to drop weight on my thighs. I focused on what I didn't want. And yes, you could say I achieved the goal, but I wasn't really that happy. I wasn't able to maintain it. And you know, the journey to get to that goal was complete hell. And it was just obvious that it was so negative and it was not fueled by positive intentions. So counter that to a few years later, I'd had Kennedy, 
Uh, you know, I crept up to 198 in my pregnancy uh, the day Kennedy was born. And, you know, within a month or so, I was into the 180s. And I was very obsessed with the scale at that time. And I just, I looked in the mirror. And I, you know, I said, wow, like, I have this cute, amazing baby, and I'm so proud of her, and I'm so proud of what I did. I had this most empowering, perfect birth that I'd visualized and imagined, and I was on top of the world. But when I looked in the mirror, I didn't love what I saw. I loved what I had done, and I was trying to really work on that acceptance and love. And so I said, Charmaine, you did a great thing, you're amazing, but it's time to you know, drop some of this extra weight because, you know, my back was starting to hurt and I wanted to be able to run again and exercise fully and not have any hindrances and be able to be a great example for Kennedy and I knew that I wanted to have another baby eventually so I had all these reasons for wanting to drop weight and look better and feel better but they were positive generally. They were things that my life was going to become easier and better when I dropped the weight and I was still really loving to myself, I would say nice things to myself, and I just made my goals for my body from a place of self-love and a place of still wanting more and better for myself. And lo and behold, it wasn't 10 weeks, it was about 8 months, but I went down over 40 pounds, and I, you know, I used a lot of the self-love and acceptance, um, I exercised, I worked on my emotional eating habits, but the weight came off and it wasn't a struggle because I was fueled by this positive motivation to want to get ready for baby number two, to want to you know, feel great in my clothes, to want to run on the beach without all the jiggle. It was things that excited me and made me feel good instead of saying, I want to get on stage and have judges you know, tell me how fat I am, basically. And you know, that's what happened. I wasn't, I mean, I dropped a ton of weight and I got on stage, but I wasn't like the number one person in the show. So at the end, I got a ton of feedback that wasn't so, so positive and it just made me feel worse. So it was cool to have all these internal motivations. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, now that was eight months it took and now I'm at around 14 months and continuing down that road. But I feel like a million bucks and, you know, I look at my goals every day and I have a strong reason I'm working towards them that's very positive and that excites me. So I'd love to share that with you and I just promise you that long term if you set an idea of where you want your body to be and you have a positive reason behind it, you're going to be so much more successful. If you focus on what you don't want and what you hate about your body, it's proven. Thoughts become things. What you focus on in life expands. So if I say I hate my thighs, I want thin thighs, I want, um, you know, I want to lose this fat from my thighs, if that's all I keep saying, that's all, I'm just going to keep getting more fat on my thighs. Whereas if I say I want to wear shorts and feel like a million bucks in them, that's going to be way more positive and affirmative than focusing on what I don't want. So, Make sure there's a powerful reason behind what you want. And, you know, if you have a powerful why driving your goals, it's going to keep you so much more motivated when times get tough. You have to have something to fuel you. I really believe goals are important because it's just, you're just going to make better choices throughout the day if you know where you want to get. And I believe writing them down, posting them up, you know, in your bathroom, just like affirmations, bathroom, steering wheel, coming to your phone as affirmations, but the more you remind yourself of what your goals are for your body, the more you're subconsciously going to make better choices. And when motivation dips, you can go, oh yeah, that's my, that's my goal. I'm going to work. I'm going to go for that walk. Or I'm going to eat that clean meal instead of doing takeout. You're just going to have more motivation driving you. So you might want to even, you know, stop the tape and take a few minutes and just close your eyes and just breathe and meditate and just think about what it's going to look like to be in your dream body. What it's going to feel like. How energetic you're going to be. What kind of things you'll be able to do with your body. And yeah, feel free to pause this and just meditate on those things. How you want to look, how you want to feel, how you want your body to perform, what you want to be able to do. Maybe it's that you just want to chase your kids up the stairs or your grandkids up the stairs without being out of breath. That would be an awesome goal. So, the quote today, 
A negative motivation is incompatible with a positive result. If you take nothing from this course other than that quote and the understanding that your goals have to be rooted in a positive place, like if you take that away from this course, I think it's a success. That was a complete game changer in my life. I started to just fuel everything I did from a place of positivity instead of negativity and it was a huge change for me. Positive affirmation today. I set goals for my body from a place of acceptance, self-love, and a desire to be an even better version of me. So the reflection today, reflect on what your goal is for your body. How do you want your body to look? How do you want your body to feel? How do you want your body to perform? So make sure you write this down and write it in an affirmative way. Um, you know, what you do want instead of what you don't want because what you focus on expands. Take a few minutes, like I said, visualize, and then consider using this framework to set your goals. So, my body can, dot, 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 my body feels, dot, 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 my body looks, dot, dot, dot. So, for me, my body can do 10 pull-ups and one one-arm push-up. And right now, this for the next couple months, that's what I'm really working towards. My goals for what my body can do always change because that's motivating for me personally. That might not be motivating for you. But something that you really want to be able to do, maybe it's a running goal, a walking goal, maybe it's like I said, wanting to just be able to run up the stairs to grab the phone or something that, and you're not out of breath. It can be anything. There's no wrong answer here. And my body feels energetic, healthy, capable and confident. And then my body looks toned and fit, thighs are toned and lean, glutes are strong and lifted, and my legs look great in shorts. So for me, I have a lot, I, I'm really working hard on my butt and my legs because uh, I don't, my body type just holds weight at those areas and I just, you know, for once in my life, I just want to wear shorts and just be like, I rock these shorts. So that's an exciting motivator for me. That gets me to go to the gym. And so I feel like that's a positive thing. So make sure to take some time to reflect. You're going to get so much more out of this course and out of your life if you have a vision and a goal for your body. Um, and, you know, I could go on and on about goal setting. It's my one of my favorite topics to talk about. Uh, if I showed you my office... It's kind of scary, but on all three walls, except for this back wall, I've got my affirmations, my vision for my life, my goals, and I just surround myself with that every day because I believe what you focus on expands, and we got to focus on what we want. So have an awesome day.